Our new Suzuki rides smoother and gives more all-around comfort than any car we ever owned. That's right. That's why we bought it. But you know, I can't imagine what they've done to make it that way. Well, lots of things. Things you can't see. Hidden values. Now, you take that easy steering, I Oh, boy. Remember me? I'm your wife, not one of your engineering friends. Oh, even you can understand this. Unfortunately... There isn't a Zerk fitting on here, which would have been the ideal situation. So what I'm going to do... Is that I'm going to pack and clean up some of the surface downstairs. And I'm going to pack grease in there. That's why I have the gun here. I'll try to pack it in there as much as I can. And then before I put the rubber boot on, I'm going to put a little bead in here. Put this back on. And then put this clip. When this gets squeezed down, Hopefully it'll create some kind of pressure that'll fill that in even more. I'm going to go polish this up. There should be enough because this will be squeezed once the um, that castle nut is tightened. There we go. So once this goes in the um, tapered hole, this will squeeze down, filling up any air cavity, any air void that's inside. But that's better than what they had there. No! It's better than new! That part's ready, and then I have to press this in. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is the largest socket I have. However, it won't clear this lip once I get to, to there, so I have to switch over to this one. And then I'll be pushing on the rubber at that point. I'm hoping that the rubber does not come loose of this um, outer shaft. To help it along, I'm just going to spray some lubricant.
I'm going to put it on this piece of wood, not to damage. These two are ready. <clears throat> so what I'm going to start doing now is of that part. There it goes. As long as that's bottomed out in there, this um, outer thing, we're good. So I'm going to call this done. They do have grease in there. Oh man. I'm hoping that when they assembled this, they put grease in there. It looks like either way, I'm going to pack it with grease. Okay, these are packed real well. Point is uh, grease coming out. So this is what I'm going to do next: is um, get all these ball joints taken apart, the new ones, lubed. I'm going to take a center to center measurement, write that down, so then I can, when I reinstall these. I can get them in to roughly where they were before so I don't have to do a lot of adjustment for um, alignment. I'll be using a lot of um, of this anti-seize just because I guess the climate that I'm in northeast part of the United States with um, salt on the roads and trying to keep this from corroding as much as possible <clears throat> 12 and 19 
clean up those threads. I'm doing about three pumps. That's it. There's a nice bead inside. I bought this uh, kind of like a quick disconnect for a grease gun because the old one was half the time where it would pop out and this thing works beautifully. Uh, I'll put a, anybody who has one of these grease guns, this thing is fantastic. I'll put the link where I got it from. You don't need a needle nose pliers for um, setting these rings. I found out that it's the best way to set them back in. What I notice once you set this first point in, go down the uh, ring. and pull it down little by little you know, the last revolution kind of sets itself in just like that this is hollow just air like I said later on this will be filled in with grease <clears throat> one thing I noticed about the one thing I didn't mention uh, none of this, all these parts, like I mentioned earlier, is all made in China. So the finish on this is not the greatest. You notice both the uh, left hand and the right hand uh, nut, nuts are two different finishes. One's uh, zinc, and the other one's this, I forgot what this orange gold color is. But even on this, um, tie rod that I already assembled this one's zinc and this one looks like plain steel it just that's the way it looks it's, you know uh, another thing is the threads there was a lot of when they machined this all the swarf was just left there I noticed it here I noticed it here it, it was just left there so if you do go down this road my suggestion is take it apart Clean it, get all that swarf metal shavings out, um, pack it with new grease, clean everything up with acetone, lacquer thinner, parts washer, fluid, whatever your, you know, your preference is. Just clean it all up. It'll make installation easier, plus peace of mind that... No! It's better than new! And I don't think that the fit and finish on these things are that uh, great either. So what I did for these, once you find out which one is which, which side is which, because one is left hand turn and the other is right hand turn. just for any future uh, adjustments put some anti-seize and just put anti-seize on everything
especially if um, you're taking this off-road and your wheel alignment goes out of whack now what I did once I got the first revolution I went 15 revolutions on each end and I got it uh, approximately 22 inches on center that's what my original setup was and then I'll make a final adjustment but at least you have them each side in almost as identical now the only difference between this and the OEM that I noticed is that the OEM ball joints had a square indentation so you can put I think there's a 13 millimeter wrench in here so you can hold this while you tighten this this doesn't have that you're gonna have to hold this while you tighten that so you may booger up this finish here okay just spent about an hour or so trying to get everything ready here everything's been um, cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner everything powder coated and or painted now one thing I noticed when I disassembled this I think you can pre-assemble part of this assembly outside of the truck so you don't have to deal with this um, this knuckle to the steering idler arm that could be installed and this is oriented basically as if you are on your back looking up onto the chassis this being the rear of the truck this being the front it goes in this manner with the idler arm in this position and then this gets attached to the rack and pinion assembly the steering rack and pinion assembly I have um, these oriented in a way that they're opposite of each other I'm still within the 22 center to center that I had that's my baseline and the way these go again you're looking at everything upside down is that this can be assembled this way and this could be assembled also and then you have your castle nuts and new cotter pins one other thing when you buy if you buy all this stuff even the cotter pins are all different flavors that they give you the, the brand new ones some are thin some are thicker some are different lengths so I decided to go to my stash I think the ones I pulled out for here are the 1 8 by 1 and a quarter for uh, these connections for this castle nut which is a I believe this is an 18 millimeter nut I went to the larger one a 1 8 no I'm sorry 5 30 seconds and I had to trim it down I followed the original one so another issue you're gonna have if you have these ball joints with the zerk fittings is that if you assemble this it goes like this on the truck you'll never be able to get to those fittings to fill this up with grease what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-grease the inner ones first maybe about three pumps at seven some may squeeze out which is a good thing at least it's packed in there for because I don't think you'll be able to get to this unless you have a a 90 degree fitting at the end of, at the end of these one thing I the manual that I have 
for this Suzuki carry F6A or yeah F6A engine <clears throat> that manual is only a service manual for the engine um, there is I if there is one out there I don't know of it of uh, as far as torque specs on any of this stuff um, somebody did ask me in a previous video about a Torx um, specification the only ones that I know of is lug nuts and the adjustable uh, camber bolts because it comes from the manufacturer those are new as far as anything else on this body that I'm aware of I don't know any torque specs I'm just playing it by eye so you know your miles may vary and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to old trusty dusty anti seas castle nut <clears throat> Now all the tools you're going to need are 24 millimeter wrench and sockets, 18, 14, and that's it. I want to orient this uh, hole <clears throat> for the cotter pin. So the body it's not in the way I mean the hole of the cotter pin is so this portion won't be in the way And that squeezed it. Let me put some more in there once I'm done here. That's the way I like to set my cotter pins. It's more than it's more than one way to skin a cat. I'm trying to remember. I believe this is what I took out last. The uh, control arms. These are the bolts. Again, I don't know torque specification. I'm just gonna snug it down till I think it's correct. These are 14 millimeter, both ends. Now these are labeled left and right. Now last night I took the liberty of uh, spray painting all these uh, points with uh, the chassis paint because some of these areas are going to be very difficult later to get to. If anybody knows the uh, torque specs on a lot of this stuff <clears throat> please put it in the uh, comments not just for me but for anybody else who's going to be doing this
kita tutup I'm going to use power tools. It's done. There's the mallet <clears throat> when you need it. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> Some of the grease squeezed out. Okay, next I'm going to do that assembly because if I put these uh, this piece here, it's going to be in the way. What I'm going to try to do is. assist me here Versus this cup, cup washer. problem the problem is the powder coating what are the chances of this staying here Powder coating is interfering with the fitment. Powder coating and the paint thickness is interfering with that fitment there. There. Now we need this washer.
and at what I believe is the 18 millimeter uh, castle nut. <clears throat> no, it's for a 24 millimeter socket. I think the steering wheel is locked. I just want to test this. <clears throat> yeah, it moves freely. Now you see what I mean that that zerk fitting on top. You'll never be able to get to it. Um, so if that's something you have to maintain later, you got to take this whole thing apart. <clears throat> I'm going to try to snug this up so I can get that clear that hole. That looks like it's it. I'm not going to set the ends here because I have a reference or baseline measurement uh, from this lip here. To in between the nuts of one and three eighths of an inch I just want to make sure that they're both in there to still keep the 22 inch center to center that way they're both even even though there's tons of threads even if I'm off there's still a ton of thread I just want to have be as close as possible to um, now this one I'll do differently. not going anywhere next is the uh, control rod and this is where I'm hoping that I fix my center to center from front from front tires to rear tires um, I did take do some math on that it's almost a 5 8 plus difference between passenger side and driver's side here oh, I think it was like uh, 17 millimeter difference because metric rules the metric system rules so that should pull once I get these on that should pull these axles forward so then I can get this attachment point here I'm hoping but like I keep saying what do I know I think that these are 14 millimeters Both of these are identical. Man, that looks sweet. It looks brand new. No! It's better than new! That's that forklift operator. Forklift mechanic from the movie uh, <clears throat> Planes. I think it was Planes 2. You know, I might have screwed this up. Did I? Yeah, I did. I screwed this up really. <clears throat> Not listening to my own advice. Something doesn't make sense. Because 
this says R, <clears throat> which is right, left. However, the bolt pattern is backwards. <clears throat> it's reversed. <clears throat> Now, do they mean R? <clears throat> if you're looking at the truck from the front, or R, if you're looking at the truck from the back, this goes like this. Something's weird. Because this bolt pattern is correct. L for left. R for right. So these are backwards. Check that out. That says 50 FAR on the new one, and on the old one, it says 50 FAR. However, it's a mirror image of it. Well, I'm not going to blame you know who. I blame you. Even though these parts are identical, <laughs> they're labeled wrong. And I don't care what universe you come from, <clears throat> right is right, left is left. If you're facing the front of the vehicle, so now I gotta take those off. So let that be a lesson to to me. I'm not paying attention to these details. <clears throat> That's okay, at least we didn't get that far. Okay, back to where I started. assemble all this first in here but I like to say this is the correct orientation <clears throat> Okay, this is the correct orientation. For this control rod. There's different names for these things, but this is what I'm calling it, control rod. It's the These two are slightly different. The uh, watch, well, it's they're, they're slightly different as far as the diameter. The one with the larger diameter goes in with the cup facing out. The ball end goes in to the fitting, while this little stud or nipple goes towards the washer. And when that goes in, 
Now, I looked online on a forum. I couldn't find any information for torque specifications for Suzuki Carries um, K trucks. I did find a lot of other Suzuki vehicles, and they all varied depending on the model or the make. Uh, so what I'm assuming is that when this washer, which is the one that's facing forward, when that bottoms out, that won't even bottom out. Maybe it'll bottom out on that shoulder once these bushings are compressed enough. So the ball end goes inward with the stud or going towards the front and this goes with the cup facing towards the front so I'm not going to tighten every, anything now I'm going to get everything set on both sides <clears throat> And then I'm going to mount everything just loosely um, snug everything down and use some Loctite on everything. I'm going to try to get this in place and put this bolt in. And use Loctite for all of this stuff. I'm going to try to see if I can get this in place before I start to tighten up stuff here. trick is we got to get this control arm installed first <clears throat> I'm gonna use Loctite on this stuff even though it has a lock washer Again, I don't know any specifications for this as far as torque. The one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to tighten this. So, you want to torque that down when the suspension is under load basically on the ground because uh, you wind up you torque it down now and when you lower the vehicle and the suspension goes up you wind up twisting that bushing um, possibly causing uh, damage or not really damage but it's, it's twisted and it'll start to wear out prematurely so I'm gonna keep that loose <clears throat> and uh, get this back in here. thing is not gonna align easily I wonder if I torque that down 
it'll pull this uh, control rod forward. So let's try that. I know it'll pull it forward. I'm hoping that it'll align this bolt pattern here. Okay. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to try, I'm going to loosen that. Bolt. From the steering knuckle to the uh, A-arm. Just looks like the alignment. It's not the angle here, it's not. I may have to even take this down. Definitely a uh, alignment issue or the fitment issue here. Trying to get this. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this even further. <clears throat> I'm hoping that'll pull it, this whole assembly, towards the front. Did see it pulling forward. <clears throat> mm. I think I'm gonna have to take a uh, pry bar to this, get it forced in there. We got about a little over three eighths to go. Oh. 
Okay. Got this one loose. This project's getting more lengthy as I start to go along. This is any indication of how tight this suspension is going to be. It might be a good thing. I need to get a block of wood and a bigger hammer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to get a pin and a clamp okay let's try a little persuasion here there it goes that's all I need Beautiful. Don't need no stinking clamps. You know what the funny thing is that actually wound up pushing that bushing out. <clears throat> about an eighth inch gap between the shoulder of the bushing and the shoulder of the uh, <clears throat> metal housing and I'm wondering how tight I can make this close that gap up I'm talking about right there if you guys can see that To loosen this so this can go back into a neutral position the, the bushings if it has a twist to it there we go and there we go Okay. 
Hey. Okay, <clears throat> that's torqued enough. I think that bottomed out. Okay, one side done as far as this uh, control arm, control rod, new bushings. Connected to the uh, steering knuckle on the passenger side. I'll come back when I'm ready to do this. I want to get this side now. This will probably be done in five minutes. Everything's so tight now. I'm having a, a difficult time putting stuff back. <clears throat> This side, I was pretty much done in 10 minutes. The only other issue, the only issue I had was that I installed the wrong washers here on the bottom. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. On this, where the uh, lower control arm, that, that bolt that goes from the steering knuckle, that's supposed to be a flat washer since that's a nylon, nylon lock nut while those two on the bottom they're regular nuts but they have the split washers split lock washers so I had to remove those washers put everything uh, put the correct washers where they belong and then retighten that bolt the horizontal bolt between the knuckle steering knuckle and the lower control arm uh, ball joint but this side went back in about 10 minutes I didn't have that money that much issue trying to get it aligned uh, I still have on even on this one I have an eighth inch gap between the uh, back of the rubber boot and the metal but this is uh, I haven't tightened these up yet I'm trying to get this uh, steering idler uh, piece this bolt installed uh, it's just everything is so tight now that it won't move freely unlike before I was able to I was able to pretty much turn the steering wheel with no issues. Now it's without a help. It's becoming difficult to do because I guess with all the bushings being new and not worn tight spaces and without making me taking this clip off Bingo. Okay, let me get back underneath the other side and the front. This newer one is for the ball joints. not a 19 
17 but an 18 I believe Before I tighten this, put the cotter pan in. <clears throat> I'm going to put these, uh, they're currently upside down. I just have them that way when I went to install this. I want to install those. Um, I do have the correct dimension. Um, for reference, These are supposed to be studs supposed to be pointing up. These I will pack with grease afterwards. Again, I'll install these differently. Okay, <clears throat> let's try this out. Oh, okay. I have play. I was wondering why this whole assembly was moving because I don't have those bolts tightened. Well, I got full movement. It's almost. That's the loose bolts at the top of the uh, control arms so it's one <clears throat> okay. This is everything. 
except for the uh, front wheel alignment. Everything's back together again, nice and tight, nice and snug. What I'm going to do now, before I do the alignment, because I got to lower the vehicle for that. In order to get to these bolts here, this one and the one on the passenger side, I'm going to load the suspension using the jack at this point here. Once I get it's uh, all the weight is on the suspension, I'll tighten these bolts because it's easier to tighten it when it's up in the air than when the vehicle is now on the ground. off okay that's one okay we got everything tightened up There goes the grease. Let's grease some of it out. Let's relieve some of the pressure. Tell you one thing, I love this fit, this uh, adapter. <sighs> nice and filled. These are nice and packed. Okay. Ready for uh, alignment now. However, before I can do that, I gotta get these brake shields, dust shields, tapped back in place. That means I gotta take all this apart in order to get to. Uh, so, I'll be back when I have this finished tires installed lowered um, and set up for uh, a wheel alignment